In this video, we are going to learn a little bit about uh, cluster analysis, and this is the topic that we're going to be discussing uh, over the duration of this course. So uh, just to give you an overview of the different things we're going to be covering, I'm going to give you an introduction to cluster analysis, basically what is it, and uh, what are the different applications uh, of it, as well as what kind of algorithms can we expect. And in fact, we're going to be covering uh, three very popular algorithms, k-means clustering, uh, dense db scan, which stands for density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise, but usually just calls db scan, and then hierarchical agglomerative clustering, HAC. So these are three uh, very popular clustering algorithms, and the interesting thing is they all take very different approaches to creating uh, clusters, and we're going to get into uh, all of those in the uh, subsequent uh, videos. But first, let's talk a little bit about uh, cluster analysis. And that's what uh, we're going to be focusing on primarily in this video, just to acquaint you with uh, some of the terminology, uh, as well as some applications of clustering analysis, for example. So uh, clustering analysis. So imagine we have uh, some data, and the whole point of uh, clustering analysis is in an unsupervised way, with no uh, a priori information, we want to be able to separate different groups based on the data that we have. And now, sometimes these groups are predefined. You have a set of data, like in this case, and you say, well, uh, this seems to, we, we plot this data, and we say, well, it seems to uh, fit into two little groups. Here, there's a little uh, clustering of uh, points on the bottom left, and there's a larger, kind of elongated cluster on the uh, top right. And uh, so we might say, well, we can give a predefined number of clusters. We want two uh, clusters, and then we can give that to clustering algorithms, and then they'll group these guys uh, together. They'll make a split. And in, actually, in some cases, we don't need to specify the number of clusters. In fact, uh, some algorithms, such as dbscan, are actually smart enough to be able to figure out how many clusters that are based entirely uh, on the data. But algorithms like k-means uh, will actually need to, we need to specify how many uh, clusters that we have. And so, for example, this data set is actually taken, it's a very famous data set called the uh, the IRIS data set, collected by uh, Ronald Fisher, which is, and he, just a quick historical side note, is probably the most uh, important statistician of the 20th century. A lot of the modern statistical techniques that we have that are used on um, all kinds of companies were originally uh, some of his work. But uh, he collected this data set of, of flowers he has uh, 50 of different of three different kinds of species of flowers, and he plots their uh, measured properties like the petal width, petal length, the sepal width, and, and sepal length, and they're all plotted out. And in this case, what I've actually done is remove the class labels because usually when we have doing, we're usually when we're doing clustering analysis, you don't have the correct labels. In fact, that's what the clustering is trying to uh, give us. It's trying to give us some notion of these things belong together and these other things belong together. So this is just the kind of data that you might expect with uh, some clustering. So, right, so clustering is taking is be taking our data and then putting it into groups such that the groups have some kind of similar properties or similar attributes here. So if we go back a uh, slide here, so we have one cluster at the bottom uh, left, for example. Those are that might be considered a cluster where uh, the flowers in that cluster have a small petal length and a smaller uh, petal width. For example, that's an example of a group of grouping is what I'm talking about. And there's so many different applications of clustering analysis, not just used for something like data science, um, but also things like uh, medical imaging for things like x-rays or MRIs or fMRIs. They use clustering analysis. Uh, recommender systems like those used on uh, websites like Amazon.com uh, and whatnot, they recommend you can use clustering analysis to help build recommendation systems, geospatial data, uh, of course, we, our data, you know, is in latitude and longitude coordinates, and we can do some kind of uh, clustering with that as well, and uh, we can also use it for things like anomaly detection in our data, and uh, the top bullet point here is we can use it for market analysis uh, and segmentation, very popular technique uh, for that as well, and so this is a kind of the, gives you a little bit of the, the applications of clustering analysis, and Certainly, the algorithms that you uh, that we're going to be learning are used in the field and can be used for uh, your data as well. So, 
For example, people have used uh, clustering algorithms to actually do things like uh, detect brain, al brain anomalies. So uh, here is just some images uh, of taken uh, of the brain, and then the different uh, C1 to C7 are different uh, clusters of the brain. They use a different clustering uh, metric. And uh, at the re result is you can kind of segment out different kinds of brain anomalies. So it's an application of um, clustering in the medical domain. Uh, in another domain, uh, what uh, these guys have done is looked at reviews uh, on Yelp.com, and they've done, performed a spatial analysis of that. So there are a lot of different applications of clustering in many different fields. So just a quick overview uh, of clustering, but uh, we can get a little bit uh, more formal with this, uh, with the algorithm. So uh, you can think of, of clustering, uh, you can think of a cluster analysis uh, on the bottom here as taking in a set of points x1 to xn, then we turn it through a machine, that is the cluster analysis, and then out comes uh, a, an assignment that maps each point to a particular cluster. So on the bottom here, x1 is mapped to cluster 1, x2 is mapped to cluster 2, and there are a lot of different algorithms that exist to detect uh, clusters. In fact, like I mentioned, we're going to be covering three of them of the most popular ones. Now, uh, the parameters, there, some of these algorithms have additional parameters to them. Uh, so, like I mentioned before, one of those parameters might be the number of clusters uh, that you have. That might have to be something that's predefined that you would give to an algorithm. But there sometimes there are other parameters uh, as well, and they vary for each algorithm, so there's no uniform, there's no like uniformness among uh, the, the parameters. However, like you see in the chart here, the input is usually the input to clustering algorithms is usually a set of uh, data points x1 to xn and they can be of any dimensionality they can be in 2d uh, they can be 2d points they can be 3d points they could be 100 dimensional points but uh, for our purposes we're just going to stick with the uh, 2d uh, points it is certainly possible to do clustering on higher dimensionality data but the one of the issues is actually visualizing uh, that higher dimensional data because we can't really plot a hundred dimensional graph uh, terribly easily, but there exist dimensionality reduction techniques that can uh, compress 100 dimensions down into two so we can plot it, but that's a little beyond the scope of uh, the course here. So we're mostly going to be sticking with 2D. And then the output, uh, like I said, is a cluster assignment. So each data point belongs to a cluster, or actually in some cases some algorithms uh, have some notion of outliers or noise built in, such as DB scan, for example. So a point may not necessarily belong to a an exact cluster. It might also belong to a, it might be a noise point, or some people like to think of it as being a noise cluster, although it's not quite uh, correct. But that is the output. And this is this is just an uh, this is a kind of a generalization of clustering algorithms. They take in this set of input points and then they produce uh, a mapping that maps each point to a cluster or perhaps to a noise point. And you can think of clustering analysis as being a kind of unsupervised machine learning uh, per se. And this is unsupervised because generally with clustering analysis we don't have any labels for our data. We just get a set of points and we're set to, uh, to cluster them. And so this is unsupervised. Now there are techniques that uh, might use class uh, labels to help uh, do uh, some kind of clustering or provide some other auxiliary information, but in the most, uh, in many many cases, clustering analysis is done unsupervised, where we don't have uh, correct labels. All right, so that is just a quick overview of uh, clustering analysis. So basically, what is clustering analysis? Um, what kind of inputs do we give to a clustering algorithm? What kind of outputs do we expect uh, from a clustering algorithm? And also discuss a little bit about different applications of clustering algorithms it can be used in a wide variety of fields it doesn't even have to be something like uh, data science or computer science it can be used in the medical field um, in business and finance and so uh, learning this information we can take this and apply it to uh, many other uh, fields so that is just a quick introduction to clustering analysis